you can change the culture, but you've got to stand firm in, in your beliefs. Mm-hmm. When everyone else around you is doing other things, you've got to be the one to, to stand firm and, and, and change the culture. And it's really cool. As athletes, we can do that. You know, we yeah. have that platform and, and God can use that in, in amazing ways. Preach, man. That is that is what it's all about. I'm Josh Merrill with Eternity Sports, and this is the Plane for Eternity podcast, where we're working together to put God in our game. Today, I'm with seven-year European basketball pro, Josh Dunker. He has just retired at the height of his career because he's going into full-time ministry. Welcome, Josh. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good yeah, to be here. of course. Um, big man for sure. 6'10", pushing yeah. uh, 250 today? No, no, not anymore. I'm retired now, so... I'll be about 230, 240 probably. Okay, what what was your ideal playing weight? Playing weight was like 240, 245. Okay. But um, different kind of weight now. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Who are you talking to? (laughs) You know, I know that all too well. Uh, Josh and I met actually on Instagram, I think, although we got connected through uh, through a mutual friend. We're both happily married. but that was kind of cool. So getting to watch you the last year, um, finishing out your career really in Japan, yeah. was uh, was kind of fun to follow you and and uh, kind of watch what you're doing. And what I what I'm excited for people to hear is how you're moving into ministry. Mm-hmm. But tell us a little about because um, you've been all over the world. You've played in ten or more countries mm-hmm. and and been traveling. And so tell us just that over life overseas life with the basketball career. Yeah, it's kind of funny because we have so much in common, you know. I think it's it's kind of like a running joke because the more time I spend with you, it's like the more we find we have in common, which is kind of funny. We both drive an F, uh, F-150s now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's another thing. It's because the only car we fit in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I've, I'm from Australia, and you played in Australia as well. But, um, yeah, growing up in Australia, um, you know, I didn't realize that I could play college basketball in the States until I was about 16, 17. And then I left when I was 18 to play at the University of Richmond in Virginia. And, um, you know, growing up, I just never really had a purpose in my life. And I was kind of just doing the sports thing. And that, that kept me on the straight and narrow for, for a while. But I was still just, you know, living life for myself and going through the motions. And then when I got to college in the States, I was like, man, I'm, I'm living the dream. I'm the other side of the world in Virginia, you know away from my parents and, you know, just kind of jumped into the college scene and, um, you know, started doing my own thing a little bit in college. But, you know, we had a pretty good um, college team when I was there. We, we made a tournament run twice and we went to a Sweet 16 um, one time, which was, which was fun, and then um, went off to play professionally and um, started out in Spain and, um, yeah, went traveling around and, many different countries and try to take advantage of that, you know, yeah. playing basketball. Tell us what it was like, you know, born and raised in Australia, then to come over and now you're, you know, a young man in, in college in Virginia. What what do you remember about that time? Like, what was the culture shock like for you? Was there was there much? Um, the biggest thing was people couldn't understand what I was saying. <laughs> people were like, what are you saying? So I had to start changing the way I would, you know, say things so people could understand me. And then I kind of lost my accent a little bit. But... Uh, I'm married to, married to an American woman now, so she's kind of, I just blame the accent on her yeah. a little bit, but, um, but it was tough. I mean, it was always my dream to play in college and, you know, just the hype of playing Division One basketball, you know, going, playing in front of 18,000 people and, you know, it was a dream come true, but, um, you know, just... I think a lot of Australians that go to play college in the States, it is hard because they get homesick. Mm-hmm. But I was just so excited to to be amongst it, and I was blessed with a good situation, and um, ended up finding Christ while I was in college. But um, yeah, I was just soaking it all up, and had a great experience. So. You get homesick at all? I mean, was that? Um, honestly, I mean, I miss my family, but honestly, I wasn't like I wouldn't say homesick because I left home knowing very well that I probably wasn't going to be back for like four or five years. Mm. I wasn't expecting to come home every off season. And so I didn't come back home for, I think it was a year and a half was the first time I went back home, which was a long time when you're an 18 year old kid. Yeah. 
you know, so um, I did that. And I, I was always doing summer school and trying to improve my game in the summertime. So I was doing that thing as well. Yeah. So just run down really quick. I know it's a long list of all the countries, you know, after you left school that you've, and you, you can count yeah. America as a country. <laughs> okay. So I started in Australia, obviously. I uh, went to college in the States. Um, I, my rookie, I was in Spain. Um, then I, my dad is Dutch, so I played in the Dutch national team. And then um, the, the national team coach, um, I ended up playing with him in the professional league out there. He got me to stay. Um, it was a really cool situation because I was going to Hillsong Amsterdam out there and I just had a great Christian community. And mm -hmm. so I, it was easy for me to stay there and play um, for the league there. So I did that. And then um, during that year, I met my wife and um, we went back to Australia. I played in the Australian league. Then I went to New Zealand. Um, after New Zealand, I went to Bulgaria for a little bit. Then I was in Hungary, Argentina, Uruguay, uh, Japan for a couple of years. And I, I went back and forth to New Zealand because I, uh, my mom's from New Zealand. So mm. I've got three passports. So I was, uh, I was trying to play that out a lot, you know, being a local a local, I wasn't taking up that import role, so I kind of milked that a little bit. But I yeah. played in New Zealand for a couple of seasons. I think that's about it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So tra traveling all over the world. What would I know? There's so many young people that you know love basketball, and it it could be really any sport. And you know the desire, and it's become so tangible for people to go overseas. Yeah. Give us what what's the what was the best part of of playing overseas best part of being overseas was just, you know, the different cultures. You meet so many different people, as you know, like traveling mm -hmm. overseas. And I just tried to soak it up as much as I could, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, obviously different um, situations and environments, uh, you get different experiences. But, um, you know, for the most part, I loved it. It, it. it helped having a wife with me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the first two years I was overseas, that was tough. You know, a lot of guys that, you know, are by themselves, it, it can be a real grind. But, um I just loved the, the culture, you know, and, you know, soaking that up. And it was, it was always a temptation um, for me to kind of just be in limbo a little bit because I knew that I was only there temporarily. And so it was, there was a temptation to think like, okay, I'm only here for a while. What's the point of getting plugged into a community or invested in relationships? But I tried to be intentional and kind of diving in and serving where I could in churches that was around and, yeah. I really tried to be in intentional with that, and the Lord really blessed that. Like, I, I was in some some countries where we had small groups in my in my apartment, and I would, you know, uh, some countries I would Google like in English speaking missionaries, and I would try and connect with them, you know, that way. And um, yeah, it was really really cool the way God brought people in my life just being overseas, and um, it's really cool. Just that, you know, being a follower of Christ, you, you have family wherever you go, you know, all around the world that you have family and, and you, you know, you might not be able to communicate as well with them, but you know their family, you know, and that, that was always really cool. That's really neat. Yeah, that's, that's you're all, all over the world. I mean, heaven is going to be filled with people yeah. from all cultures, all races, all colors. Um, I love the word you said was intentional. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, even here in the comfort of our own backyard, we grew up. However old you are, I mean, we can just get comfortable yeah. in in just our just being where we're at, and we don't challenge ourselves. We're not trying to get connected. And I think there's so much value to mm -hmm. being connected with other believers, especially other believers uh, that are playing your sport in your gym, on your field, in your teams. There's some real power there. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, look at all the professional athletes. Of course, it's their job. They travel. But all those teams have chaplains. You know, you're really able to connect, whether you're praying together, but you're going through life together. And I think that's that's a powerful statement. And I think something that's probably, obviously, like you said, has really empowered you and, and helped you helped you grow in that. Yeah, and, and I always love, like, just to add to that, I always loved um, doing life with, with guys. Like, I remember my rookie year, I was living with two other guys in the same apartment, you know, and we were doing everything together, like practicing, come back, we were eating together, you know, living in the same apartment, we were doing everything together. And those guys, they weren't believers, but um, they see everything you do, the good and the bad. And I love that because they really, you know, get to see, you know, okay, how's this guy living? You know, he says he's a Christian, but you know, I could always tell they were watching how I would handle myself in different situations. and. That's one of the things I love about sport is like you, 
it really reveals your character, you know, yeah. and the rubber hits the road every day in practice. You might get a bad call. You're having a bad practice and how are you going to respond to that, you yeah. know? And, and I always love that because those are opportunities for you to, um, to make much of Christ, you know, to, um, you know, to have a good attitude or, you know, people notice those little things, you know? Yeah. Well, I love it because I think when you're with sports, it just helps one, the connection with one another. But I think any type of sport or activity that you do together, when you go to battle, you go to war, even if it's against each other, it immediately accelerates a friendship, good or bad. Yeah. And so with that accelerating, you, you, it just kind of pushes you to the next level. So as you automatically build this trust uh, with people, with teammates. And so I think your walk and your testimony just carries so much more weight. Definitely. And so I think we should all be challenged with that, the people we're playing with riding bikes with, playing golf with, whatever that is, you know, when you slice one off into the homes, I mean, what's your, what's your reaction? Yeah. You know, anyone that plays golf can relate to, to slicing one off into the homes. Um, and if it is a bad response, you can reflect on that and, and think, man, what was in my heart? Mm -hmm. Why did I respond that way? Yeah. And you can go back and, you know, that's, that's another way that God can grow you through sport, you know, yeah. that you can see that. You know, because it's not every day. If you're not around sport, it's not every day that those t you're in those type of situations. Mm -hmm. So I love that sport is can be an arena that um, God can grow you in that way. Yeah, and sports is great too. I think because we, we you learn how to fail. Like it's something I tell parents all the time with with our ministry is just they need to learn how to fail. And yeah. so many parents today, more so than ever, I think, are stepping in front of their kids because they don't want to see them fail. But it's through that adversity, like in a good controlled environment. You know, if if a kid's going to fall out of a tree and break his arm, well, he's going to know next time he went up too high and he's not going to go that high. Or he's going to work on his climbing skills. You know, one of, the, one of the two has to happen, and we just want to keep them in a bubble, and there, there's not that chance. But sports, I mean, you get in a basketball game, for example, you got 40 times a game, even Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, LeBron, they fail. Right. They, they fail at, at some point, so we're, we're always getting better. Okay, so we got off to topic a little bit, but so what's, well, I wanted to ask, what's the hardest part of, for you was traveling overseas? And, you know, the hardest part traveling overseas, I don't know, I just think of living out of two suitcases, that mm -hmm. was always a challenge, but you kind of get used to that after a while. I mean, I've been living out of a suitcase since I was, since I went to college, it's been like 12 years now, you know, so yeah. you just kind of get used to it, but... Um, I think, you know, just being away from family and friends. Um, I know for me, um, we were talking about this earlier as just not being, you know, in a church environment always, you know, some countries you don't get that fellowship or you're not around other believers that are challenging you and, and encouraging you in your faith. And that was always a real, a real challenge mm -hmm. because, um, when you don't have that support system, you got to be really intentional and feeding your faith it's like you know you got to go out of your way to to do even more because you know that's what the body of christ does that you you can grow so much just being around other believers but when you're more isolated you you kind of missed out on that grace that god has through the body of christ and you have to find other ways to be intentional to to keep feeding your faith and so that was always a challenge and um, you know, that's one thing that I've always been looking forward to is being in, in a community. Yeah, so good, so good. We were up late last night talking, and uh, so I'm ahead of, I'm about 10 years older than you, yeah. and uh, so when I was traveling, we didn't have Google. <laughs> <laughs> so he's telling me, yeah, I used to Google. There was no Netflix. Skype it was, yeah. Yeah, I think I was on some software to call home before, like, the Skype and all that type of stuff came home, so... I was, I'm jealous of all these guys, like the technology oh, and FaceTime. Oh, it's totally different now. Yeah, I used to uh, have my mom record uh, shows, like my favorite shows, and she would send a VHS down. I always tell people, like, I should have been the one inventing Netflix. Just like, Netflix, right? I was I was in need of that, and I had a, I had a need for that, so it just... just that would have been so, such a challenge, you know, without the technology we have today. Yeah. I mean, that would have been... Really you know, I tell tough. people, because I had just gotten recently saved when I started that, you know, my, my, my professional career overseas... And uh, I bought a nice computer, and I had my Bible. And uh, it really, the language barrier pushed me into that. And I look back now, it was just totally God using that time in my life. Because I list, I had three or four pastors I like to listen to. I listened mm -hmm. to them online, and then I would read my Bible. I mean, like, hours at a time. And I, I mean, mm -hmm. I read my Bible all the time, but I can't remember with kids and a ministry and a wife and all that where I had time to, like, just... 
like I would read to my eyes would would burn, and I right. and it was because I was I couldn't speak the language. I was in a foreign place, and it really it really was a, yeah, just. A, a, I can so, totally relate to that. I remember, especially the years where um, where my wife wasn't with me, I, I would really try and take advantage of that time because you have so much time. You come mm-hmm. back from practice in between two days, and most of the guys are sitting at the apartment, you know, hanging out till the next practice. But you can use all that time to you know, to study the Bible and do things like that. So I remember always trying to do that as well. Yeah, yeah. I read a ton of books. I mean, I was a kid that hated reading, couldn't read, and then here I am. I mean, I, I carried novels around with me, you know. It was like, so it was, it was, a, it was a good time, mm-hmm. good time in my life. Uh, so kids, make sure you learn how to read. The, uh, so we were talking about this too, and I think this is fascinating because as we speak, like, okay, professional basketball players getting to travel the world, he's getting to do all this stuff, and there's so many cool parts of that, um, which we spoke spoke on a little bit, but... You know, I think you mentioned you didn't have any guaranteed contracts till your last couple of years in Japan. Yeah. And I want you to share on that a little bit because I have a similar story and just the uncertainty of, of that lifestyle, even for an NBA guy or, you know, I mean, an NBA has guaranteed contracts with the NFL and you have these other sports where it's a little more difficult. So how was that? I mean, with your faith and and kind of kind of walking through that the last six, seven Man, years. That's that was always a way that God would would grow my faith every year, and especially in off seasons where because with basketball, you're always trying to play well overseas. At least you're trying to have a good year and move on to the, you know, to a bigger and better team or a better league. And so I remember the off seasons was always a challenge because I would sit at home waiting for my agent to, you know, come up with different jobs, and and you just kind of wait, and it's totally mm-hmm. out of your control. You can't do anything but wait. And so that was always really challenging. You know, my wife is always like, oh, so what's you know what's the news from your agent? Where are we going next? You know, because you got to pack up your life, and yeah. whenever you sign with the team, you're leaving with within the next couple of days normally. And so, um, yeah, just that that was always a challenge, um, you know, with that uncertainty, but also playing as well. You know, when you don't have an, a guaranteed contract and everything's magnified when you don't have a good game or when you mm-hmm. when you're losing. You know, some teams like you played in Argentina, and I remember out there it was you know with the imports it was like a revolving door guys are in and out every other week and so if if you're having a bad game um you know you think that your head's on the chopping block you know and so um that was always a, another way that god would kind of test my faith and trust in that look all you can do is is take care of what's in your hands mm-hmm. you know play to the best of your ability and you know leave it in god's hands because you can't control that stuff yeah. you know and so um, that was definitely a, a challenge. In as yeah, well. it's it's a hard way to live. Uh, that's one thing that pushed me towards, you know, eventually kind of wanting to stop. But I always tell people, I don't know how guys do it that don't have the Lord, because I've really yeah. found peace in that. Like, hey, this is where God wants me to go. And but in that, you know, especially if you don't speak the language, um, you don't know what these guys, what they're saying, what they're talking. I mean, they could be telling you right, you know, talking right behind you, and you wouldn't even know it. They're 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 planning on sending you home. So it's definitely a, definitely a tough thing and the unknowing and all that. Um, but yeah, having having God and all that, it's kind of like, I always felt like, hey, I was a missionary. I didn't have support from a church. I had, God was supporting me with the talents he had given me. Yeah. And I, I kind of always like, hey, where, wherever you want to go, God, and, yeah. and I'll go there. And that's what, that's what I loved about, you know, having God, you know, with me. It's like, you know, with, with our faith, we have... You know, God is our solid rock, is our firm foundation. But, um, you know, there's that stability, having having Christ that, you know, um, you know, playing overseas for seven years, you know, when, when you play for a number of years, you, you try and not have the highs too high, not the lows too low. You try mm-hmm. and keep it more, in, you know, more centered, more even. And so um, with Christ, it's like, you know, when you don't, when you have a bad game or when you when you when you lose a, a close one, um, you know the lows aren't too low. I remember without Christ, it was like my life was over mm-hmm. if I had a bad game because you know you. I remember building my life around that was my identity, is in my ability to play the game. And when that's not going well, my life is just in shambles. And yeah. so I really love that um, and just experiencing that that you know you, you can run to Christ and he's always going to be there for you. And, you know, that's when you really stand on the promises of God and mm-hmm. that just comes to life, you know? Yeah, I was going to mention, the you know, we start identifying with how well we played the last game and we lose sight of who we are and what God's given us and what mm-hmm. we're supposed to be doing. So perspective is is really good there. So you kind of hit on it earlier. I'm like a 10 years, 
ahead of you version. Yeah. Uh, I want to. I'm excited just because uh, I think that the people need to understand Josh. This Josh, Australian Josh, um, is leaving kind of the height of your career. I mean, you had you had a great season uh, last two years in Japan, guaranteed contracts and uh, doing well and becoming a, a star over there. And you have been praying over the last year and are stepping away from basketball. So we played the other yeah. day and you might be re- officially be retired, but you still you still got plenty of game to <laughs> plenty of game to uh to play. But you are stepping away and you are going to be taking over uh, a sports ministry program yep. similar to what to what I did almost 15 years ago. And uh, so just walk us through what that last year was like and the transition and how God is really moving you to Maui. Uh, to launch vertical sports yeah. at at Hope Chapel there in Maui, it's it's an amazing amazing thing. Yeah, so going. you know, just going back to my college days, I got saved um, in college just through hearing you know different athletes' testimonies, kind of like you know like right now, just hearing people's stories, and that really encouraged me that man, you know, I can I can play ball for the glory of God too, you know, and just un- understanding that that's possible really encouraged me. And, um, and because I got saved through a sports ministry, I've always had a heart for other athletes. And obviously, I'm an athlete myself, but I've always, you know, um, I know God's put that on my heart ever since I got saved is to, to want to give back to, to kids, especially just to, you know, to share with them that it is possible to play ball for the glory of God. And what does that look like? And so um, I just, you know, being overseas and playing, um, getting that experience, um, but it's something that I've been praying about for for a number of years now, doing sports ministry, and um, it's just kind of crazy how the the door opened to step into this um, to this position in Maui. It's just it, it was just perfect. Not too bad that you're in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can't complain. That I expect that you have a nicer tan next time I see you. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta I gotta work on my surfing skills. Yeah, but, um, yeah. So just you know to. So basketball in Maui has been running for ten years, and we're just we've just expanded now to vertical sports Maui, where we're gonna um, accommodate to different many different sports. So obviously in Maui, surfing's big. Uh, we want to do skateboarding. Um, we're hoping to do a, a baseball one this year, um, football, soccer. So similar to what you're doing out here, and so um, it's really cool just to spend time with you and and hear from you what God's done in in your ministry over the 14 years. But I'm just really excited to step into that. And obviously it's a, it's going to be a new season of life for me because I'm stepping away from ball, but it's something that I've been really excited about. So yeah, it's really neat. Um, it's kind of how we got connected was, was through the, through pastor Ben over there. And I love and have for the last decade at least really kind of step in alongside people that are wanting to do sports ministry. And that's actually how Eternity Sports was was birthed because I think when I started, there was not a lot of people around me, especially in California, in Hawaii is the same way. You know, a youth pastor, I always say, can go down the street and talk to another youth pastor and what's the best way to do ministry and 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 connect with people. But with sports ministry, it's a, it's a little far and few between. And uh, I think we need me personally, where God has put me, I want to be intentional in helping people and just, you know, dialoguing with you and, and Ben. Yeah, last... I've just been, I've just been so blessed, you know, spending time with you, man. And I really appreciate yeah. you just kind of sharing, sharing with me what God's been doing, you know, through the ministry. Cause it's, you know, I've spent the past two, two days at your, at your basketball camp and seeing how things are on. And, um, it's just amazing what God can do through sports ministry, you yeah, know? Absolutely. And if I can help anybody, uh, avoid, you know, it's almost like raising kids. You don't have kids yet, but it's like if I can help them navigate a few pitfalls uh, along the way to to help them grow and become the best they can be. It's it's the same way I, I feel for you guys. It's uh, you know any church and 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 pastors or directors that I've helped, and you know actually eternity sports. There's a second phase coming where we really want to kind of connect the, the sports pastors and directors and parachurch type ministries where we can be connected together because I think we're yeah. stronger that way. And so I'm excited just to, I'm learning a ton just as you guys launch your ministry. You know, the way ministry is done in Maui is different than we do it in LA, sure. but it's still the ministry aspect of that. So man, I'll be praying for you. That's that's an exciting Thank you. And a, an exciting time and, and all that you have going, moving to, moving to Maui is a big, yeah. but... 
Man, it's, it's going to be fun. I hope uh, you guys get the spare bedroom ready for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we're going to... Property's a bit more expensive in yeah. Maui, so hey. give us a couple of years. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, All right, there's something we like to do on the show, a little rapid fire. So spend the last couple of days with you. Just what the what the people need to know about right. Josh Josh Dunker. And uh, man, he throws down some hard, some hard dunks. So coming from Australia... <clears throat> kind of have to with that name, right? Yeah, you got to. <laughs> you got to. Um, I definitely didn't get that name or that skill. <laughs> um, okay. Vegemite or peanut butter? Vegemite. That's not even a question. <laughs> Man, I tried so many times, so many different ways. Every, every Australian will tell you you're having it the wrong way and then want you... I don't understand what the obsession is out here with peanut butter. I just, I, I don't get it. Yeah. Well, we don't, we don't understand you, so <laughs> we'll just, we'll call it, we'll All call right. it a truce. Uh, favorite NBA team? Uh, Golden State Warriors. Okay. Favorite NBL team? That's the Australian National League team. Sydney Kings. Sydney Kings. And you played for them. I did, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that's cool, playing for your favorite team. That's, that's Yeah, that was neat. a dream come true, just playing for my hometown team. I grew up watching them, obviously, and so playing out there was really cool. Cool. Uh, back to the bucket or facing the basket? Back to the bucket. Okay. Around the hoop, left hand or right hand? Oh, right hand. Right handed? Um, yeah, my, my left is my, my weak part of my game. Okay. What's your go-to move in the post? Uh, my go-to move is pretty much anything over my left shoulder. I, tr- I try and get to my get to my left shoulder. So, um, you know, my game is if I'm not picking and popping, mm-hmm. um, I try and get to my left shoulder for that, that little baby hook. And if they cut that off, I'll try and come back for my little okay. fadeaway. I wish you would have told me that a couple of days ago when we played. I would have had a, a little advantage. <laughs> uh, your favorite all-time teammate? Favorite all-time teammate? Wow. Um, I would have to throw it back to the college days where a college teammate of mine who helped me uh, come to Christ, um, he was actually... Um, a guy, we were on a road trip one time. This is before, um, before I knew the Lord. Um, he was on the bus reading the Bible with one of, one of my teammates. And I was really confused what they were doing reading the Bible. I've mm-hmm. never seen that before. And so I started asking him questions. And um, he, was, he just started sharing his faith with me. And so I really appreciated just building a relationship with him back in college. And he really helped me kind of step into my own faith and, and walk me through that. And he was just an amazing teammate, so I'm just thankful for him. Yeah, you guys still keep in touch? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. He's kind of off the grid a little bit. He's not a social media okay. guy, and he's still playing overseas, so it's not as easy to keep in touch. Okay. Who's the toughest guy you ever played against? Toughest guy I've ever played against? Um, wow. Probably, I mean, there's some there's some tough guys playing over in Europe. Yeah. Um, some really strong guys, but I remember playing in college um, against the Morris Twins. You know, they're still playing now, but they were they were pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah. They just look strong. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they are. It was funny because before the game, we got uh, our team got into a little scuffle with them in the tunnel. So in the tournament, um, this is Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. This is right before that. Right before the game, and normally. You've got teams coming out from two separate ent- entrances, and but for the tournament, for some reason, you have both teams coming out the same way. And we were, you know, doing a little pregame huddle, getting hype, and they kind of tried to just run through us, and a little push and shove was happening. And um, I remember Thomas Robinson; he played in the league for a little bit. This huge guy just decided I was trying to like break it up. And he just shoved me. I was like, hey, you're good, man. Like, don't, <laughs> I'm not trying to do anything with you. But, you know, yeah. him and the Morris twins, they were, they were some big guys. Yeah. How close was that game? Uh, not as close as we liked. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Still a sweet 16, right? That was, that was a good experience. Yeah. yeah. That, that's really cool. So I love to always spotlight this with athletes because I think it's so important where our culture is. We always want to, we always look at the guy. So, you know, we're talking about Josh Dunker and, and who you became, but you, you've already shared a little bit about your college teammate, you know, sharing the Bible with you and, and openly reading his, his word and on the road trips and things like that. But was, there, was it him? Was there someone in your life that really um, helped guide you and not necessarily getting you saved, although that, that could be it, but someone that helped kind of disciple you and learn how to kind of take your faith and your, into your sport? Yeah, I've been really blessed just, you know, traveling all around the world. The Lord is... Um, just put across my path like a lot of mentors that I've been really 
really blessed by. Um, I remember when I was playing for the Sydney Kings, we had a team chaplain that I just tried to soak up uh, as much as I could from him. We would sit down on a weekly basis and I would just try and learn as much from him. And he would always challenge me during the week. Okay, um, you know, just different ways to share your faith, you know, sharing your faith, being able to share your faith within two minutes, you know, how how can you do that? Or sitting on sitting on the plane next to one of your teammates, how can you, you know, encourage them and in, in or challenge them and in, uh, in their faith? Um, and so that was really cool. Um, obviously, the guy I was telling you about in college, he really started to um, just shape my understanding of uh, of living for God. You know, I remember I remember this conversation I had with him. I was just telling him, man, I'm just so thankful for all that basketball has, has given me. You know, it's been able to bring me across the world and it's it's given me so much. And he was like, no, that's God. Like, God bless you with that. And I was mm. like, wow, that's that's so true. Like, God has blessed me with, with you know, with basketball in my life. And I started to think from there, like, man, I'm I'm six ten. That's that's a gift from God, you know. Yeah. And and that was really those early years where I started to think and, and understand the gifts and talents God has blessed me with. And then I started to really think about, okay, how can I use that for the glory of God? You know, because up until then I'd been mm -hmm. trying to use it all for myself, but I, you know, um, would try and you know change it. And and that was a challenging season in my life because. You know, I, I used to be on the court and use basketball as an outlet to just unleash all my anger and frustration. And, you know, I used to cuss like a sailor, you know, being growing up in Australia. So that, you know, that was a challenge to uh, to honor God in that way. You know, I, I didn't want to cuss on the court. And that's that's a way that I tried to try to honor the Lord. But um, yeah, so during, during college, another guy that was a mentor for me, his name was Mickey Toll. Um, he ran a sports ministry out there and I used to spend the summers at his house um, and we used to go and do sports ministry and um, he was a, he was a football chaplain and I used to go and shadow him and just walk up and down the sidelines and watch how he you know um, challenged and encouraged, encouraged athletes and I just tried to learn a lot from him so he was definitely a guy that really yeah. helped me in my faith um, in the early days yeah that's great I think we got to be it's it's so often we're we're trying to be the man and you even hit on it I think we we it's a good way to think about it with money but even our talents it's like all we have is from God yeah and so often like no this is mine this is mine this is mine and we're holding on to this talent and uh, I always like to use the example because for me this is this was powerful, and I don't know who I learned it from, but we need to be a river and not a dam. Yeah. And so often it's like, and I know before I got saved, what can basketball do for me? Right. You know, where can what can I get? What can I do? What kind of power, fame, money, whatever that girls, whatever that is. Um, and we got to remember that all comes from God and flows from there. And we start then we start looking and seeing all those people around us. And I want to encourage everyone out there that we need to we need to be that person to somebody else. Yeah, we need to step up. I mean, that is sports ministry in a nutshell. Um, Absolutely. And we all have we all have those people around us right now where we're at. So I just want to encourage anybody like just just be intentional with that and know that all we have, whether you're you're Steph, you shoot like Steph, or you're throwing up bricks, it it doesn't matter. You have an impact in a ministry kind of right where yeah. you're at and, and I think that's a challenge as well because we try and as athletes we try and limit that to oh maybe I'm just not producing or even if you're not playing a, a big role in a team or you know you think that in order to have a voice of 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 impact you've got to be like one of the star players or something like that mm -hmm. but you know people people need to be encouraged in their faith and you can um you can be that person on your team and in, in your environment and one of the things that I love to um, to share with people, and God's really challenged me is is changing the culture, you know, and and being overseas in different teams and many different countries, you know, God has put you in that position to to change your culture. If it's not, um, you know, being athletes, if if your teammates are going out drinking and partying after every game, you know, if if that's not something that you you like to do. Um, then you can you can change the culture, but you've got to stand firm in, in your beliefs. Mm -hmm. When everyone else around you is doing other things, yeah. you've got to you've got to be the one to to stand firm and 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 change the culture. And it's really cool as athletes we can do that. You know, we yeah. have that platform, and and God can use that in, in amazing ways. Preach, man! That is that is what is all about. I think, and and not succumbing to 
that around us, the culture around us is is just telling us, hey, leave your faith at home. Right. And, you know, hopefully these podcasts, uh, you have somebody around you opening your word that you can find, you can be encouraged to connect those two and bring your faith into it. Yeah. Uh, we, we can't be afraid of that. Uh, I know it can be hard for young people, you know, that you we want to fit in, we want to be part of that, but man, God blesses and honors all that in such Absolutely. a greater way. And I think you use the word, um, I love this word, impact, like changing the culture, yeah. but we can impact those around us right now. And if we are if we are a movement of believers that play sports, I mean, we should be we should be owning that that yeah. that space. And uh, And you don't have to have it all together. I think that's you know, I, I was just saying with your athletic ability, uh, but not only that, it's with your faith. Like even mm-hmm. if you're even if you're a new believer, you can still share your share yeah. your faith and, and encourage people. You don't yeah. have to know all the all the Bible verses, know all mm-hmm. the scripture and you know, I, I didn't grow up, you know, going to um, going to Sunday school and, you know, I didn't grow up in a church. I didn't know the Bible at all. But, you know, when I when I got saved, I knew for a fact that I was once blind and now I see. Mm. And I wanted to tell everybody that that God loves them and he can change their life. And so I didn't, you know, I didn't know I, I didn't know the Bible too well, but I knew what God did in my life. And I was going to tell that to everyone around me. I remember yeah. on campus, I was telling the janitors, <laughs> everybody, I was just so excited. And, you know, that's another thing is, you know, people can't take away our testimony. That, that, that's a fact, what God has done in your life. Um, people need to hear that. And, you know, God has blessed us all with different stories. And that's something that, um, you know, we should be sharing with people is our story. Absolutely. And, you know, our journey story and, People can relate to that. Yeah, so. that's great, man. I, I I hope people are re- really really catching that. Yeah, the tes- testimony is so powerful, uh, man. I, I appreciate you sharing with us, and I mean your heart is so ready for ministry. And we talked about this the other night too. Is God is preparing us? Yeah. Like it wasn't like oh just the last year and you're gonna go do sports ministry. No, I mean we're looking we're talking back to college, finding the Lord, owning that, being mentor, being around people. And for me, I have the same thing. I can think of like just specific times that God was preparing me for what I've been doing doing uh, with, with the ministry. So I think we're all in that space. It doesn't mean we're all going to be working at a church, but whatever that space is, God is God is working there, and just just to be faithful in in where He's put you. Yeah. And I'm excited for what you're going to do over there, and and kind of we'll watch from the mainland, and and uh, really be pray, be praying for you guys. Thank so you. we always like to end the end the show. We're gonna put you on the spot, and uh, we want you to help us get a, a new guest, someone that's in the professional sports world, okay. that's on fire for the Lord, and would be good to sit down with and, and hear hear their story. Yeah, actually, um, my uh, I'll tell you, my brother-in-law, his name is Brandon Dixon. He plays for the Major League Baseball team, the Detroit Tigers, and he he loves the Lord, and um, he's having a good year this year, actually. He got dra- he's from uh, from Southern California, but he got drafted by the Dodgers and he's playing with the Reds last year. Um, but he's with the Tigers this year and he's doing really well. And um, it's just encouraging hearing from him and um, the the other believers on his team that are that are you know encouraging each other and they have a chapel on their team and um, the chaplain is actually doing his wedding this year in December. Oh, that's cool. Um, but he uh, he loves the Lord and. Um, yeah, I'm sure he would love to be on the show and just that'd be great. Share share what God's the done. So SoCal guy, yeah, yeah, that, that's awesome. Um, and he's leading the team in home runs, right? This year he is. Yeah, he's leading the team in home runs and RBIs, and he's had, I think, 150 less at bats than other guys in his team. So he's having Killing kind it. of a breakout year. Killing it, yeah. All right, good. So we'll get him after the World Series this year. <laughs> we'll, uh, yeah. we'll 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 get him on the show. Well, man, if you were to leave the people with anything, what would what would be the encouraging thing you you would want to leave somebody with? Wow. Um, one thing I would say is that it's never a bad time to seek the Lord. You know, I think that sometimes we, you know, if we're going through a tough time, um, it's not we don't feel like we can we can seek God, or even if we've if we if we've been stumbling in our faith, or if we feel like we've fallen away a little bit. It's always a good time to seek God. And so one of the things that I would just encourage other guys is to seek the Lord, you know, and, and just 
um, just being faithful and, and seeking Him every day, and, and He promises that He will join into us when we join into Him. And so, um, yeah, I think that would be my word of encouragement. That's a that's a good word, man. We appreciate you sharing today, and uh, we'll be following you and wishing the best of luck. Okay, yeah, thanks for having <laughs> me. You bet. Appreciate it. Awesome.